Hi everybody, I'm Chris Bakke with NASCO Education. And I actually did a longer video on this lesson plan called um, Archimboldo meets Audubon. In fact, I did the whole thing calling him Acrimboldo because I didn't investigate how to pronounce it. So it's Archimboldo. So this time I'm getting it right. I have had a lot of fun working with art teachers who have developed these lesson plans for NASCO. And right now, we are creating um, project guides to go with quite a few of the lesson plans so that students who are learning from home can take the project guide and create utilizing products that they have from home. This one was written by Jen Johnson from New Jersey and I love that she has taken two artists and moshed them together. Um, if you don't know who Archimboldo is, he's the artist who is very famous for um, taking like fruit and vegetables and creating portraits with them. And so um, it's funny because when I saw the art, then I'm like, oh, that's who that guy is. Audubon actually didn't start off as an artist. He started off as a bird watcher and a bird researcher, but he would draw, you know, they didn't really have, I mean, I'm sure cameras were expensive and cumbersome, so he would draw the birds. Um, and so then he became an actual artist as well. So the idea behind this particular lesson plan is for students to research a uh, a bird or an animal, um, and, and really a bird because it's Audubon, and then create it utilizing what they eat and then also the habitat around them. So it, it makes it uh, a little bit challenging. So the project guide is just going to give the step by steps. I always recommend for teachers to pair it with the lesson plan just because there's going to be extra tips and techniques. This one works with watercolor pencils. Students might not have watercolor pencils, so whatever um, colored pencils they have will work just fine. Here's sort of how the project guide goes. Um, you start with a sketch, and I always giggle because I'm pretty elementary in my drawing. So I thought I can probably handle a robin. So I made my sketch of a robin and I have gone over this with a Sharpie marker so that you can see my sketch a little bit better on the camera. So if you're wondering why there's a pole here, it's a golf course. And I giggled when I was doing the research on a robin because they actually said a golf course and I'm like, that's gonna make this fun, and I knew it would be a little bit easier for this video. So that's my sketch. From there, I'm gonna actually start my um, final piece, and then I'm going to create my robin and color it in using the food that they eat. This is a spider web because did you know robins eat spiders? Like I did not know that, but they eat berries and then of course worms. So I kind of created some spiders on the feet and in um, the wing and then certainly with his belly and breast, I put the um, berries on. From there, you are going to watercolor. And this is, um, this is a multimedia paper that, um, you know, it's only 50 pound, but it really held up well to the watercolor. So then I just added um, some background and foreground and of course the flagpole for the golfer. And I thought it turned out pretty cute. I, I, I really had a good time making it. What I like about this is if you don't have any supplies, um, but you might have some glue and paper, just have fun and pick out some food from a magazine and create sort of that Archimboldo um, portrait. You know, if you really are talented, you could probably create a bird or something out of the food. I just decided it would be fun to do a person. Um, this is green beans and there's some scoops of ice cream for the face and you can see that there's lettuce and I just had a good time with it. So 
Have fun, use what you have, and be creative.